We're going to be looking at part two of this lab, which is the HTTP conditional get response interaction. We're going to recall from our text that most web browsers perform object caching and thus perform a conditional get when retrieving an HTTP object. Before, before performing these steps and a lot of our steps, what we're going to do is we need to go into the history of our web browser and we're going to need to clear the cache from it. I'm going to leave that open because we're going to do this for the rest of these questions when we have to uh, implement a new um, topic. So we have an example about how to do this under Firefox. It's kind of the same for other browsers. Um, you could always look it up if you don't know how to do it. These actions will remove our cache files from the browser's cache. And now we need to do the following. So we have our web browser. We need to make sure our cache is cleared, which it is. We're going to start up the Wireshark packet sniffer. We're going to stay with our HTTP. Um, yep, it's going to be the HTTP. We're going to continue without saving, and so it's going to run now. We're going to enter the following URL into our browser. Our browser should display a very simple five-line HTML file. So we open this. We have it like here. We're going to quickly enter the same URL, or we can just refresh the page, and it'll look like this. So we're going to stop the Wireshark packet sniffing. And if we have um, issues, we can look at this. But we don't. It ran correctly. And now we can answer the following question. So we need to inspect the contents of our first HTTP GET request from the browser to the server. We're going to look for an if modified since line in the HTTP GET. So in the first GET, we have right here. We don't see any HTTP modified right here. And I'm going to jump down. And in the lab report, we have um, pictures that we're, we're going to be referencing. I'm going to jump down to number 10. So we're going to skip number 9 real quick. It's saying now inspect the contents of the second HTTP GET request from the browser to the server. So the second one is going to be this GET. We can see in this GET we have an if modified since. So th this is the first one. We have nothing. In this next one we have an if modified since. And that is because we have previously been here. So we are modifying this. It's going to be afterwards. And this is the information that we are given. Back to number nine, we can inspect the contents of the server response. Did the server explicitly return the contents of the file and how can we tell? So our return is gonna be here, right? So we're gonna look at the line-based data and we can see that it returns what is in our browser that we opened up. It returns everything that we wanted to. So that is good, that works. Number 11, I actually wrote down wrong. So it's asking us what is the HTTP HTTP status code and phrase returned from the server in response to the second HTTP get. So our return is going to be here and we are going to see that it's going to be instead of a 200 OK, which I have here, a 304 not modified. So that is what we're returning and we could put some parentheses around this just to mark it as true. And that is the return there. We asked did the server explicitly return the contents of the file and we can explain here. Since it is not modified, it is not going to return anything. So we're gonna say and does not return anything this time. Because previously, if we look at this other return right here, we do have our line right here. We don't need to return it again though because it's right here in our browser's cache. And that's it for number two. Next we're gonna be looking at retrieving long documents. But that again is all for part two, which is the HTTP conditional get. We have conditionally gotten our return here because we don't need it here since we have it cached.